Welcome movies buffs, today I'm going to recap an American romantic drama, Secretary 2002, that is about a young woman who has recently been released from a mental hospital. She gets a job as a secretary to a demanding lawyer where their employer-employee relationship turns into a naughty one. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. The movie starts with Lee Holloway walking into her office with a rod on her shoulders. She weirdly staples and picks documents through her mouth and goes away, slamming the door with her leg. Six years earlier, Lee is seen standing outside a hospital with her luggage. Dr. Twarden comes to bid her farewell, and she emotionally hugs him before leaving. Soon, her mother reaches there to pick her up, and she reluctantly goes with her. At the wedding ceremony, she comes across one of her old school fellows, Peter, who asks her whether she is happy to be at home. She replies she doesn't know. Then they dance together. Her father gets drunk and comes to Lee. He hugs her emotionally, telling her he misses her a lot. He sits down as he doesn't feel comfortable due to overdrinking. Alcohol may be man's worst enemy, but the Bibli says love your enemy, seeing her father in Sucha state, Lee begins to sob and leaves for her room. She takes out a box containing sharp-edged objects under her mattress and opens it. She takes an object and tries to hurt herself, but she stops later. She closes the box and puts it in a drawer. At night, she sees her parents fight and abuse each other badly. Her father pushes her mother, who falls down and blacks out. Lee gets terrified and goes to her room with a kettle of hot water. She hurts herself with that kettle, smiling and crying simultaneously. Simultaneously. Later, she is seen looking deeply at one of her toys in the swimming pool. Lee is in her class doing typing practice, following her teacher's instructions. She seems to be performing well, increasing her typing speed. Her mother appreciates her while going back to home. She remembers the time when she tried to commit suicide by cutting her vein. As a precautionary measure, her mother hides every knife and sharp-edged object in the lock. When Lee sees this, she gets angry and leaves. She also throws some of her toys in the dustbin, where she notices a discarded newspaper. She picks it up and returns to her room. She sees several Job ads in the newspaper and chooses one to apply for. She practices her introduction in the mirror, then she finds another ad for a secretary vacancy and feels happy to see it. She reaches the given address in stormy weather and finds everything scattered on the floor. A woman comes there to pick up a box. She greets Lee and leaves immediately without listening to her. Her. Then she sees Gray, who is a lawyer in need of a secretary. A lawyer with his briefcase can steal more than a hundred men with guns. She presents her credentials and he tells her she is overqualified for the desired post. He also tells her about the work that is absolutely dull and boring. She agrees to do it and returns to her mother in the car. She tells her mother she has got the job. Her mother gets excited, feeling proud of her. Lying in the bathtub, she practices responding to phone calls and feels great pleasure in her newly acquired job. She starts her job at Gray's office and performs several tasks. He appreciates her performance and seems fully satisfied with her. Once, she asks the first secretary about paralegal, but she doesn't reply and leaves. She returns to her office with coffee and a packet of donuts for Gray. He asks her to go to the trash bin and brief some notes he accidentally threw out. When she is gone, he throws the packet of donuts in the dustbin. She goes and finds the notes in the bin. In. While returning to the office, she sees her mother there, waiting for her. Lee tells her she has to be there for more than five hours. Then, she brings the notes back, but Gray tells her he has found their copy and doesn't need them anymore. He asks them to get more sugar in the coffee and freshen up the mousetrap. She goes back to follow her instructions. When she is freshening up the mouse trap, he looks at her legs steadily and notices the marks of wounds there. Suddenly the phone rings and she rushes to attend it. At the same time, Gray's wife, Trisha O'Connor, reaches there to see Gray, but Lee asks her to wait. She gets angry and shouts at Gray, who listens to her voice in his office. Behind every angry wife there is a husband who does not know what he did wrong, he doesn't want to see her and hides in a cupboard. He asks Lee to ask Trisha he is not there. She comes out and tells Trisha he is gone. Just then Lee's father calls her, and she feels happy to talk to him. Trisha gets angry and stampedes Gray's overcoat, and tells Lee to ask Ask Gray for the settlement. When she returns to the phone, her father has gone. She gets enraged and slams the receiver in anger. She takes out her purse and is about to hurt her with a needle. Gray looks at her from a distance and she stops hurting herself. 
Later in the evening, she sees Peter at a laundry, where Gray reaches to collect his clothes. He sees her with Peter washing clothes and kissing passionately. He feels jealous of them and leaves. The next day, she finds a spelling mistake in a letter and gets angry with Lee. It seems he needs another secretary to correct the mistakes of her current secretary. She feels sorry about it and apologizes to him. He scolds her and asks her to be careful in future. She retypes the letter, but he keeps finding mistakes in them. She feels sad and hurt, but keeps on trying to improve her performance. He criticizes her dress and body mannerisms, calling them inappropriate for his business. Later at night, Peter's parents ask Lee for her consent to marry Peter, but she doesn't reply to them. The next day, Gray calls her in the library and asks her to practice receiving telephone calls. She picks up the receiver, and he tells her how to answer it professionally. He behaves kindly with her and asks to share her problems with him fearlessly. He asks her to stop hurting herself and throw her sharp edge tools. He asks her to go home and relax. She leaves the office and finds her mother outside. She she tells her mother she will go home on foot to feel fresh air. The next day, she again makes typing mistakes, and Gray gets angry with her. He gets too closer to her and asks her to retype the letter. She goes to correct the mistake. When she returns, he asks her to bend down and read the letter. She follows her instructions and starts to read the letter aloud. He suddenly slaps on her hips that surprises her but doesn't feel bad about it. He keeps slapping her and she keeps enjoying them. What the hell is going on here? Anyway, back at home, she asks her mother to unlock the cupboard, where she has kept all the sharp-edged objects. Her mother feels happy to observe a positive change in her behavior. Later, Lee goes to the river and throws her box of such objects into the water. She now starts to enjoy her job performing every task submissively. She intentionally makes mistakes to take pleasure in the punishment given by Gray, who does so in different ways. Her mother is pleased to see her happiness, but doesn't know anything about her relationship with Gray. She pleases herself at night, remembering Gray looking at Peter's pictures too. The next day, before returning home, she asks Gray if he needs her to do anything for him, but he tells her she can go home. She feels sad at this because she wants to spend more time with him. She goes to the hospital to see her father, who is sick due to overdrinking. She feels unfortunate to see her father in such a state. She goes to Gray, who is surprised to see her late at night. She tries to talk to him, but she cannot do so. He closes the door and asks her to leave. She goes back crying bitterly. The next day, she feels a change in Gray's manner as she behaves more formally with her. She tries to tempt him, but he seems uninterested in her anymore. He is so addicted to him that he tries to please her in the same way he does to her. The next day, she finds a earthworm on the grass and puts it in a letter to annoy him so that he may punish her in the way she likes. She gets intimate with Peter, but doesn't feel any pleasure in it as she is used to Gray now. He finds the earthworm in the letter and asks her to come to his office. He asks her to bend down and pull out her skirt when she reaches. She thinks he is going to get frisky with her, but he doesn't do so. He just masturbates and leaves. She feels bad, but doesn't say anything. She goes to the washroom and pleases herself, imagining Gray's presence. He gets irritated about his act and removes his certificates from the wall. He burns some of the photographs of his previous secretaries, too. He tries to type a letter, but cannot, getting tired and sick. The next day, when she reaches the office, he repeats the same interview questions he asked on the interview day. He suddenly gets angry and fires her from the job. She loses her temper and slaps him. He gives her a termination letter, and she leaves crying bitterly. She doesn't tell anybody about her losing her job. She pretends to go to work daily and looks at his officer from a distance. She sees the new secretary he has hired. She decides to please herself by finding some other guys. She sees a few but doesn't feel satisfaction, so she stops doing so and confines herself at home, caring for her father. One day, Peter proposes to her surprisingly at a restaurant. She accepts his proposal but runs away to Gray in her wedding dress. He is surprised to see her and asks her to go, but she doesn't go back. She expresses her love to him, making it clear that she won't go back. To test her love and patience, he asks her to sit at a table and not move until he asks her to do so. She sits down at the table and waits for her. He returns and sees her in that state. She doesn't move and keeps sitting there. He calls Peter 
and asks him to get her with him. He reaches there, but she refuses to go with him. Later, her mother tries to convince her, but she doesn't listen to her. Several people go to see Lee try to either stop her or support her, while Edward watches from a distance, totally taken by Lee's willingness to comply and the sexual desire it sparks in him. After three days, during which Lee was the subject of live news coverage for what they called the Lee Holloway hunger strike, Gray returns to work and takes Lee to his home, where he bathes her and cares for her. Lee and Edward get married married at the end and are happy to continue their loving relationship. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. And remember, stay curious, stay creative, and keep exploring. See you in the next one.